Yes? All right. So if we have a, a temporal series of images, then it's much better. For instance, we, we go to the same area, uh, which is Plaza St. Jordi, the, that plain, that former wetland uh, around the airport, and we see how the water crops uh, has been decreasing year by year up to year 2000, where it stabilizes. Uh, so then we already have a question, so why that happened? Uh, uh -huh. So we already have a question, I say, why that land cover changed that way? Uh, if we use natural colors, I mean, uh, sending the green to the green channel, the red to the red channel, the blue to blue channel, is also helpful. I mean, we can see Mallorca from the Sentinel to satellite, uh, the 9th of July, the 9th of July of 2018, here on the right, or the 5th of April on 2018, here on the left. We see that symphony of greens, of a, a wet, it was a particular wet spring of the island with the symphony of browns in the summer. We see the, the forested areas or the still agricultural areas where they change it. We also can still see the scar of a wildfire in 2013. We see more water browner here in the wetland of Salbufera in the spring than in summer, which is more vegetated. So all this information will be an introduction to, the, to, that, to that place, to that objective, to what we want to analyze. Uh, here I I won't go through all of them, but there are some points to consider when making a visual analysis, especially the subjectivity of the person who's going to make the photo interpretation. That's important to have a systematic methodology. Uh, the best is to combine both, in my opinion, to combine digital and visual analysis, because as, as I said, the eye is very clever, and the eye will discover things that an algorithm won't, uh, and that's that's the thing. When we jump now into the digital analysis, uh, we will work with the value of the pixel, the value of the reflected energy by any pixel at any different band of this satellite, of the sensor of, of the satellite. Creating at the end a spectral signature, um, we see here we represent the wavelength and we have the percentage of reflection. And we can see how, for instance, vegetation, as we mentioned before, has a peak of reflection on the green, uh, and then another one on the near infrared. If we could see near infrared, that would be the color we see. Uh, but no, we see, we see green, and another peak on the short wave infrared channels. The water, for instance, has a peak on the blue, and then decreases. That's why when we see water in, in infrared, it's, it's dark, because it absorbs all the energy. So if we want, for the ones working with coastal waters, I mean, uh, they have to work with the blue or the coastal blue, uh, which is a bit, um, which is around 0 0.43 micrometers, uh, which, for instance, the Sentinel-2 satellite and the Landsat A satellite have have included those bands. We can see the sediment in the sea. We can see all all those things. Mm -hmm. If we take a sample, a real sample. Of, of, we go to the wetland of Salbufera. So we just take a, a few pixels of water, a few pixels of wet soil, a few pixels of dry soil, some of water crop and some from a pine trees. And then we analyze the value for each one of the, of the bands. Uh, we put them on the plot and we can see that for instance, it's that the vegetation we have that dark green we have the pine trees, and here we have the water crops on that lighter green. We see that the behavior of the, on the different wetlands is similar, but we can see that, for instance, on the near infrared, that the water crops have much stronger value of reflectivity than the pine trees, and that's, that's, that's very good. Because we can not only uh, classify vegetation as land cover, we can also classify different types of vegetation. And as more bands we have, the, more the, com the better the combination to classify one, one vegetation or another one, or different soils, for instance. No? So that will be a quick example to take a spectral signature of, of that image. 
if we go a step further, we can move into a spectral index. A spectral index is nothing more than a combination of different bands. Here we have NDVI, which is a classical index that combines the near infrared and red band. It's a normalized index, and we will have a value that goes between minus one and one. But just estimating the index of, of an image, uh, and considering that NDVI below zero corresponds to water or artificial roots represented in red, and NDVI above 0 0.6 is very dense, ambiguous vegetation, dark green, we can already be build a land cover map. Uh, a simple, land, but quickly, a land cover map. Uh, and the final step of the digital analysis in that case would be the image classification. Uh, a bit more complex, uh, because at the end, is we will give a, cat a, cat a category, a land cover, let's say, if we set of observation, to each of the pixels, uh, to each of the pixels. The thing is that we will work with the spectral pattern of each pixel, as we've seen uh, before, but we can also use the spatial pattern of the system, of, 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 of the image, I mean the texture of the image. Uh, and um, we, we can see like the fractals, then with a GLM matrix, we can work together. The thing is that up to now was not really used because the computationally is very computationally intensive, uh, but now it can be, it can be worked together with the spectral pattern. And how we classify, there are different, there are basically three ways of classifying an image. Supervised, uns unsupervised, and hybrid. Supervised, it means that the specialist, the photo interpret, so recognizes the different land covers, uh, decides how many land covers, how to group the land cover, because you have water. You can use water as one land cover, or you, you want, maybe you, you decide to have two classes, coastal or deep water, and make it separate. Uh, so it depends on um, of, of the, your objective. Uh, and then you will draw polygons of represented, representative areas of those land covers. Uh, a sample, uh, and then you will launch, you will launch the classifier. And the classifier will do the rest. Uh, will recognize pixels that have the same pattern, a statistic pattern of that group of pixels. That will be one. The second, the second one, and supervise is that, all right, you launch the classifier and you say, I want seven clusters, for instance, and the classifier will make the clusters. Uh, you don't know what they, what, what they mean. But sometimes it's, it's interesting, and that brings me to the third one, hybrid classification, because you launch an unsupervised classification, uh, because sometimes it will help you to discover a class that you didn't thought on. I mean, uh, and then you continue with, you, with your supervised classification. That would, be, that would be the example. I mean, for instance, an unsupervised classification, we said, okay, we're gonna supervise water, sand, forest, urban corn, and high. Uh, and then each one of those land covers uh, has uh, a our index of reflectivity in each one of those bands. So you take a sample and the classifier has to find whether all the pixels in the image have a, a pattern similar to that one. Uh, so at the end, the, the, the classifier will have to decide. So the, the pixel goes here or goes here. You can also keep a, a class of no data for those ones who doesn't fit on any of them, of them, right? Let's make an example, for instance, that with the Posidonia. That's a satellite image. The satellite is the Worldview 2. Uh, it's a private, it's a commercial sat satellite, but for instance, I had the image courtesy of a special European Special Agency because it has a pixel of 1.6 meters, which is quite good and has eight bands, multispectral. It's the one we use with, with, uh, with Manuel, with Jose and, and Javier about on, the Chilea, on the Chilea project. So you recognize that's the, um, the beach of a strength in St. Salinas, right? And we're gonna see, we're gonna see, we can classify 
seven land covers, if I remember well, if I did. So we're going to concentrate on this area here. Hmm? That, of course, is a, is a natural color RGB a representation of the area. So we zoom in, and I said, okay, let's try. Now, is, there is a lot of light from the window, but, but, uh, but I don't know. I think that will help. So I said, at least I want to classify two types of vegetation, sand, water, and three types of Posidonia, dead Posidonia on the, on the, on the beach, outside, the Posidonia, but under the water, and also those, those areas here. What I did is just draw some polygons, and then launched the classifier, uh, and then came the map, which fits quite well. But then the thing is that, what does it mean? I mean, then you need someone to go there. I mean, we have, to com we have the map, but that doesn't tell us whether the Posidonia is healthy or not. Uh, we classify the Posidonia, and we have a value per pixel for each one of the bands. But now we need to send someone deep in the sea and take samples of the Posidonia and say, that Posidonia is healthy, that is not healthy, uh, to, to create a, a range of values, and then we could make a better map. So not only whether it's not, not my map, I've been not, I haven't been scuba diving there, so uh, we could change that one for a particular condition of the Posidonia, for instance. So that, that comes back to the, to the first two ideas I told you. Uh, we have a value of reflectivity that allowed us to classify that land cover, but then to convert that into physical value, I say, how healthy is that plant? Here is, is, a possibility, is one of the possibilities to, to work with seagrass, or in that, in that case, with, with Posidonia. The European Special Agency has an archive of images of this satellite, the, which they bought, that you can apply for them, uh, but you, they, they have to love your project somehow. I mean, you, you make a proposal, you, you explain them your project, and they will give access to their bank of data, to the, the archives of the worldwide, worldwide to satellites. Uh, if not, you, uh, you have to buy them. You have to buy them. Right? So now a brief, now we're going to jump into, into the different platforms and sensors part of them, because there are many. If, if, if we get into the cube satellite thing, we won't finish. I mean, uh, you, can, you can imagine. Uh, but we'll, we'll start by classifying the sensor between active, uh, the ones who can emit energy, like radar, LIDAR, uh, or sonar, and the passive ones, the ones that limited to receiving the energy from an external energy, like, like the sun. Uh, so first classification, active or passive. And then, we can also classify the, the sensors by, the, by the, their resolution. Which resolution? The spatial, spatial, spectral, radiometric, or temporal? The first, the spatial resolution, will determine the smallest object we can see. Huh? And it's measured in meters onto the ground. For instance, what does it mean? We have the same area, the airport of Palma. We have a spatial resolution of 10 meters, the Sentinel-2 satellite, that's the sensor. Uh, that means that the pixel equals 10, a square of 10 meters in the ground, right? And that's the smallest part we can identify. With the, with the former satellite, what we do, we could, disc we could identify an object of 1.6 meters, for instance, right? And even it has a panchromatic band that worldwide with 0 0.4 meters, 40 centimeters. So if we jump to the Landsat one, which is 30 meters, that's how we would see. And then if we go to MODIS, we'll have 250 meters. It depends on what we're going to do. One is better than the other. I mean, if we want to see the sea surface temperature, we don't need to 10 meters, not even 250. I mean, with one kilometer, it's fair enough. Huh? That goes every day. That's every 16 days, and that every five days. Sentinel, because Sentinel launched two, two, satelli two Sentinel-2 satellites. 
And all together combining here, we have images every five, every five days. Mm? But that will be the temporal resolution. The spectral resolution is the number of spectral bands uh, that, uh, that the sensor can discriminate. Uh, and also, how narrow those bands are. Is the number of bands and how wide, wide or narrow are, right? Because the higher the spectral resolution will make it easier to spectrally distinguish one object from the rest. Because there are some plants, for instance, that they have a particular response to a very narrow part of the spectrum. And it's important to have, I want to have just this. Not, I, don't, I, I want what they call the rate edge. Uh, I want to, to have the value on the rate edge part of the spectrum. Because that's where I will know if the vineyard is sick or not. Uh, that's, that's the idea. Mm. Here will be an example of a pro the Landsat program, which is a multispectral sensor, and its evolution from the four bands of the Landsat 1 to 5, and then the, the seven bands from the Landsat form 5 that was launched in 1984, 1972, 1984. That, to compare those images, I mean, Landsat A, which is, the, which is current now working with Landsat 1, is not, wor I mean, the spatial resolution is not the same. Uh, and it's, it's not really working, but you can perfectly compare any image since 1984 with the actual bands, actual images from Landsat 8, and that's very powerful. Uh, you can see that, you can see here, the spectral resolution is here, uh, and you can see how wide, is the, how wide is the blue, I mean the range between the, between between 0 0.5 and 0 .5, 0 0.45 to 0 0.52, for instance. Huh? And you have to make sure that more, you, you have the blue in Landsat 8 that is similar or almost similar than, than the other one. The third resolution of a sensor is radiometric, which at the end is the number of bits of the sensor. For instance, Landsat was 8 bits. So 250, now is system, most of the sensors now work on 16 bits. Uh, but before it used to be 8 bits, which is 256 levels of gray. For that, I mean, if we're going to do visual analysis, 64 gray scale levels is the maximum our eye can identify. We don't need more. Mm. But if we go into digital, it's good to have 8 16 bits, for instance, because then it will help us to discriminate one thing for the, for the other. So considering that if it's a visual analysis, a bit is 256 levels of gray is more than enough. Anyway, we cannot go any further. No? And the last one is the temporal resolution. Uh, how often the satellite will go, will go through the same place? Uh, we, I won't go into different orbit, etc., because there is no, no time. No? Usually, there is a rule that uh, the, the best, uh, uh, as higher is the, sp the, the spatial resolution, uh, the less is the temporal resolution. So a satellite, a satellite like, uh, like Terra Anacqua has modern sensor, uh, visits almost every day, almost every day, because some, it depends on the latitude, but almost every day. The Landsat every 16 days, and the Sentinel would be 10, Sentinel-2 would be 10 days, but they launch it the second one, so they manage to have an image every every five days, right? As platforms, there are many, but those are, op those are platforms with open data, uh, with open data from the main agencies. I mean, Landsat, images from 1972, all the archives available. Uh, Terra and Aqua, we have the, the MODIS sensor, for instance, for, for oceanography that are very used, uh, from 1999, the Terra and Aqua 2002, with the particularity that they come, they go, they, the orbit is every day. Terra goes around 10:30 UTC at the equator, uh, the sending, the sending node, while Aqua is a sending node about 13 hours 30 UTC, so to have two moments of the day, and at the same time, during the night, the sensors of long wave infrared of thermal they work. So you can have the temperature at night. Uh, that's so if you want to get images from the satellites, where to go? 
The United States Geological Service has the Earth Explorer website where there are, there are all the archives of Landsat, MODIS, NOAA, digital ele elevations models from Aster. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. It's very intuitive. You just have to log in and it's very easy. And one, one important thing is that if you go to the server, you, you get a, a Landsat image a few hours after the, the image has been taken by the satellite, the same day. The same day, you don't need you don't need to have an antenna or anything. The same day. If we go to the European Space Agency, uh, here is the other. This is the the Sentinel. You put the Sentinel hub, the senti where you have all the different Sentinels. The one which is which is a synthetic aperture radar, the Sentinel two, the Sentinel three, the Sentinel five, which monitors the gas the the gases at the atmosphere, etc. That's also uh, that's also a server to go. And the third that I decided to put, because it's relatively new, is Google Earth Engine. Why? Because Google Earth, you don't know, you heard about Google Earth Engine, but Google Earth Engine, they manage, it's not Google Earth, it's Google Earth Engine, you log in with your Gmail account, and they manage to have all the data, because they have all the data sets from those agencies I showed you before, and other satellites in their servers, and you work differently. I mean, uh, it doesn't have a script. So that means that you just, you made a request on these servers. I mean, you call a collection of images and you decide to clip them by a certain area and maybe calculate the spectral index. And then you will get the result in seconds or minutes. In seconds or minutes. I, I will show you some, some examples. We, start, we, we, we go to now to, to some examples that I prepared. Here there will be the list. I mean, when you go to remote sensing for the effort observation, what is most usually done? I, I, I don't know what I decided to put that image, but it's an image from, uh, from December 2015 from Landsat 8. It's here in Iraq. Uh, and we can see oil rigs burning after an air strike to avoid selling the oil, the smuggling, selling, selling the oil by, by ISIS, I think. That was, was that's the, the idea. Uh -huh. But somehow, we can work hazards. Mm -hmm. That's the 6th of August, 2018. It's not a fake. <laughs> it's not an enzymata. It's a cumulonimbus, it's a cumulon, cumulonimbus taken by aqua satellite on the MODIS sensor. Natural color is, is that was Mallorca with the cloud, I mean, uh, right? So hazards, floods, that's very, earthquakes, for instance, with, with active remote sensitive, you can, you can also see the movement of the earth. So temperature, land surf, in that case, for instance, with Terra Modis, land surface temperature, we have an image almost every day. For instance, I did, that image is from the 24th June 2016, 11.29 local time, okay, time, in that case. And what happens here? I classify the temperature, for instance, and in, in that red, the last red is 42 to 46. It's land surface, it's not the air temperature, the land temperature. So we can see uh, the areas, the hot spot, the areas that are heated strongly in summer, which will depend on the albedo, it will depend on the color of the earth. We, you, you see Mallorca that some some parts are white color, which is called blanque or kaivermai, the, the red one. If it if it's, has vegetation, which evapotranspirates, will be lower temperature or not. So there are many different elements that will work on it. But at the end, what is interesting is that that will give us the key of the, of the sea breeze, of the wind. We have a sea in summer around 26, 27 centigrade, 26 more or less. Uh, we have here almost 45 centigrade. Uh, so it starts the movement like this from the two main bays, for instance, and you can imagine how the breeze is created around midday. And even a storm will happen. When the convection and then the cloud will create, boom, and a storm. That allows you to un allow us to understand what's going on. That, for instance, I did it with Google Earth Engine because I said something that my computer couldn't do, 
I said. So take all, it's, it's made from, from the aqua satellite and the, sens and the MODIS sensor, is the land surface temperature. And I said, all right, count, take all the, all the images day by day since 2002 uh, to 2000, so 18 years times 365. If there was a cloud, it's mask, it's mask. And every time a pixel has a land surface temperature that reaches 50 degrees Celsius, put it on the side. And then put them all together uh, as well, and put it on the side as one. So maybe days that, that temperature has been reached. I said, all right, how many days uh, that pit, any of the pixel has reached that temperature? So, so we have here around Bini Salem, uh, we have 34 days, for instance. So we ha here we had the, really, the real hot spots, no? 33 days here outside Yuma, Yuma Yor, uh. Those are the ones, those are the, the areas which at night are colder, cooler, colder, right? Cooler, no, colder. Uh, so it's where the, the, air, the air cannot circulate, it stays there. Uh, and, uh, but for instance, that calculation with that many, with those images, if I had to download the image, I had to download the whole image of the MODIS and then start clipping it and doing all the process. By that, I already said I want the calculation for that particular area. The handicap, I don't know how that works. Oh, I just send the script. Huh? Uh, a similar example, in that case, on the sea surface temperature. Also, that, that I thought was quite interesting because it shows in that case, the number of days between 2003 and 2008, so 16 years, with sea surface temperature above 27 degrees. I mean, uh, that temperature that is the, the one of the hurricanes in the, in the Atlantic, no? That, that gives enough energy. So how many days do we have? We could thought that the Bay of Palma should be the place where the temperature is, the sea surface temperature is higher. No, no, the Sierra de Tramontana. We don't have the sea breeze. The mountains doesn't allow the, the embat, the sea breeze to happen. And we don't have the, the north wind affecting. We'll see later why not, really, in, especially in summer. Uh, and at the end, there are many calm days where the, so it's a place that almost around 350 days, the temperature was about 27 degrees centigrade. That, that, makes anything to, that does, has something to do with the tornado about two months ago. I mean, but it's the place where the, where the temperature is hotter. And, it's, and it's, it's very clear, it's very clear where that happens. Then, for instance, we, let's imagine, we, the air, here is, uh, is uh, the Torrent de Paredes, uh, the, this canyon, we have La Calobra, La Calobra, and we have this part of the island, which has is basically limestone, calcare, limestone, limestone, with very thin soils and some vegetation. Let's, what we can do, for instance, uh, we can represent that area uh, with infrared, and we already visual analysis. We already see that there are different types of vegetation, uh, which is in that case we know. I know it's ericarborea. The darkest, the darkest red is ericarborea. Uh, and then we have the Ampelodesmus Mauritania, the, the, the brighter one. But let's imagine that we want to know, for instance, which percentage of, the, of this area is vegetated. I mean, uh, this area which is really dry and, and uh, with no soil and with a lot of wind. So we estimate uh, an index, a spectral index like NDVI, uh, and then we go there we go there and said, okay, let's put the limit at NDVI at 0 0.3. That's where the vegetation will start because we will decide, physically we'll say, that is vegetation, this is not vegetated. I mean, depending on the density. We, we put the limit, we put, and for instance, we can estimate in that case that this area has almost 54% of the surface is vegetated. If we had to do it by drawing, we would never finish. Huh? That's, that's a sample. We can see, for instance, that something which is quite frequent uh, when we have that, that uh, southeast wind that brings the dust from the Sahara uh, 
that reaches old Mediterranean, well, goes to the Amazonia, I mean, the one that goes from Canary Islands, crosses the whole Atlantic, uh, I mean, uh, Javier. But um, it's something we can also check perfectly. And also, for instance, going back to Herschel, we can estimate the floods. I mean, that's, that's a Landsat image from, from the 19th of October 1990 in the Albufera, in the wetland. Uh, and applying the spectral index with the shortwave infrared bands, uh, we can estimate the area flooded. I mean, we can quantify it. We know exactly how many, how many hectares were affected. And we, with the follow-up image, 16 days after, we can see if the, if, the, if the area has decreased or not. Also, the wildfire scarf, that's, that's, that's very useful. Like, here we have an image from Landsat 8 from 22nd August 2013, where you can see the wildfire of Andraj. More important than the, the area affected, we can classify by severity, but also we can monitor how it recovered, how the vegetation recovers. And because we have the archives, we can, because that's an area which has been affected several times, we can then see if every time that we have a fire, the vegetation takes longer to recover. Because this area, for instance, has been affected by for five wildfires in the last 30 years. So we can take all this information. Uh, we can see the Earth at night uh, with the satellite, with the Suomi NPP that goes every night. It has a sensor, the DNB band, that takes, takes the, the, the night life. And we can quantify it. I mean, we have, we have the values of radiance. Uh, and for instance, we can see if the, the street lights are efficient. If the town hall has changed the lamps, which are more efficient, are not, are not sending the light to the sky, so we can see the stars, the bird doesn't get lost, uh, the bill is cheaper for us, anything. So we can quantify it. That's, those, those are all public, public satellites. That's the Sentinel-5, and that monitors the gases, and for instance, we can, that's the nitrogen dioxide, uh, and that was also made with, with Google Earth Engine, because what, what that, comes, that satellite has an image every day. As I said, okay, take the average between when it was available, which was 18 July 2018, is the first time it was available, up to June 2020, and make the, aver the average of every pixel of every day, because I want to see the patterns of the concentration of the of the nitrogen dioxide, because it depends on the wind, etc. But I said, if, I, if we put all together all those images, the average will give, you, will give us something. And we can see, of course, no, the big cities. And we, we see the, the Parana Plain uh, below the, the Alps, I mean, where the Mil Milan is. Uh, we see the Netherlands, the Rhin, uh, the Rhin, <laughs> Paris, of course, London. We have Cairo. But what is interesting, even, ha have you seen this line? You can see the, the big ferries lines. I mean, the smoke of the chimneys of the ferries. I mean, if you take all those 700 images together and to, you take the average, it leaves the, the path. Huh? So that is, you get, you get also, with Sentinel-5, you can play a lot of, with these aerial souls, it has plenty of, plenty of things. If we jump into the active sensors, into the radar, Sentinel-1 is, is very good because it's open data. Uh, you have also images every five days because there are two Sentinel-1s, A and B. Uh, and for instance, you can see, I mean, that is the wind, that's, that is the wind in the sea. I mean, that's the, the, the sensor of the Sentinel-1 uh, detects the rugosity of that maze, the wind maze on the sea, the waves, and it's represented that way. You can quantify it. That is just visual analysis. But you can see the wind that goes into the Strait of Gibraltar. You can see internal waves, which are, the, probably you, you heard about them, which are, which are, I think, aesthetically, they are really beautiful. And you can see also the boats, the reflection of the boats, because they have a double scattering on the, on the sensor. It's made like a, like a carambola. So that's why it's so strong. So you can see boats, you can see the wind, you can see internal waves. 
So for oceanography, the, the sentinels are, are very good because also they don't depend on clouds. Continue with the Sentinel-1 and recent events. We have on the left side, we have the Alex storm on, this, on the 2nd of October. Uh, and we could see at the moment that with the eye of the storm and the cyclonic eddy. I mean, you can see the cyclonic eddy. Then with the SNAP, which is a software free from the, from the European Space Agency, you can, you can take the vectors of the wind, of the wind uh, velocity, wind speed. You can take the wind, and it will, sh it will draw the vectors uh, with the wind, wind velocity. You can have it. Well, this is quite interesting because something that, that the colleague of, of you, uh, that you, you all know probably, Ustiyan Sa, so work is that behavior of the Tramontana wind. So that, that's what I told you. You see why it's so calm here and the temperature? Because the Tramontana wind is not affecting the, uh, this part of Mallorca. And why not? I mean, that's an image of 31st August. It's a, is a, is a day of Tramontana. We have, this is the rain impact over the water, uh, the drops of rain uh, over the water. And that is, it, it, it shows the direction of the wind. I mean, the wind of Tramontana f gets finds the, the, the Pyrenees mountains, it has to be diverted to the Gulf of Leon, to, of Leon and makes like this. And there is a clear line, uh, that wind shear, very clear, where with wind, no wind. So the wind affects fully Menorca, Cap de Pero, but it's not really affecting the Tramontana. So it's not the Tramontana mountains who protect us from the no north wind, it's the Pyrenees and that. Continuing with active sensor, we have the LiDAR uh, with laser, with laser, and for instance, available also the flight is, that was a flight from 2014, and if we go to Peninsula de Cap Ventos in Cabrera, we could, we could see the altitude of the vegetation, of the trees. Uh, so the trees above 10 meters, I mean, trees with a hike of 10 meters in red, then, if you, if you put the, 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 the water stream, the torrentes, it, it makes things. So at the Talbeck, where there is more soil, probably concentration of, of wetness, huh? so it's where all those trees are concentrated. So you can map the, the tree altitude. Huh? Or even more interesting, you can, that's the uh, digital terrain model huh? made with LiDAR from an area of Banyal Bufar, right? Between Banyal Bufar and Estellans. You, all these shades, I think, are terraces. Terraces. Terraces that were visible in 1956, for instance, in this part here, but which are not visible now by any satellite or any aerial, aerial photograph. But the lighter, some of the points, points can penetrate the vegetation. And at the end, you can even draw the terraces below. That is why it's also useful for archaeology, things like that. You can find, discover a town in, in Mexico, no? things like that. So that's why the, the light that is, is quite useful. Mm -hmm. Also, we can do digital elevation models. For instance, that, that LiDAR fly we have has 0 0.6 points per meter. So somehow you can make a, a digital terrain model with a pixel of two meters. But that is the, the, the altitude above the sea level of the Plaza San Jordi around the airport area. So at the end, it shows how it used to be the wetland perfectly. You can see here in Casablanca, you can see where, where the water starts, right? And how it goes up to, the, it makes its way to the sea. Uh, and Imagine this brown, that yellow, is between one and two meters. So we are almost six kilometers from the sea. And here in Casablanca, we have within one and two meters. Of course, we have the exact value of the pixel in centimeters. It's just a classification. Huh? But, but if we punch the pixel, we say it's going to be 1.65 or 165 centimeters. Huh? Also, for, for that coastal, coastal representation, it's, it's quite useful. And as Manuel said, if you have ideas 
I don't know, good or bad or whatever, but I, there are about 80 different articles of uh, basically most of them based in, in the Balearic Islands about things that can be done with satellites in this newspaper. You just look, you put Atalayandes de la Spy in Arab Balears, you, you will find. And we are with two more minutes because as two considerations, we, I started with two ideas, but um, two considerations. I mean, when NASA sent the Landsat to the space, in 1975, they decided to see whether the satellite could somehow measure, measure the, um, the, depth, uh, the, the depth of the ocean in shallow waters, right? They had a satellite above, but they sent Jacques Cousteau on the ground. They sent Jacques Cousteau. We all know Jacques Cousteau, I suppose, no? with the Calypso and his team, huh? his Flori the Strait of Florida, because at the same time the satellite was flying, he was down there also checking with the scuba divers, with everything. So that's what I mean by an holistic approach. Uh, with, this, with this field work and also working with interdisciplinary teams. I mean, uh, work with the botanists, with the geographers, with the mathematicians, we work with all the different teams that at the end is what it will give the answer. It will give the answer of, of, of your question. And the second, uh, is to observe beyond the pixel value. And I like to use that example that probably you know, you read at school or at home or whatever, Le Petit Prince. Uh, and we all want, I mean, to have that creative look uh, that you always have fun and trying to find, because we all want to discover the elephant that hides the hat. Uh, we want to discover that gem. Uh, and that's, um, for that, we need, to, we need to have recover that, that child, child's look on, on, on the themes and question everything, question everything. And that's all. This is Gloria. This is Mallorca and Gloria Storm in 20, 23rd January 2020. Uh, you can see all the sediment plume from, from, from the storm. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. The, the, the Arabalears page is, is linked to the, to the announcement. It's Atalayandes. They, 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 the spy. Don't worry. It's linked in the, uh, uh, you put Arabal Atalayandes the spy. You put it in Google and you find it. Don't it's worry. linked in the yeah. announcement. Ah, yes, in Sadregonera. Yes, I mean, uh, yeah. So now I guess there will be more, more questions going slowly or quickly. Yes. Quickly. I start. Yes. Very yeah. interesting. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So in the, in the Coastal Blue, uh, how, many, how many bands there are that can go deep into the water? Uh, five, ten meters, something like that? Well, I've seen, I mean, there are some, some papers on mapping seagrass that they get about 20, 25 meters. But also depends on the conditions of the sea. I mean, uh, the sea has to be calm. I mean, if the atmosphere varies, the sea also varies. So the day that the satellite goes, uh, I mean, you, it will be different. So 20, 25 meters, you, you, you could map. But one thing is to map the seagrass. The other thing is that to take information of how healthy the the seagrass is. How many bands can you have in here? I know that there is, I mean, the, the op one only one, I mean, uh, you, you show three or three bands, not before. Each satellite, no, each satellite has, has uh, for instance, the Sentinel, the, the Landsat 8 has eight bands, 11 bands, the Sentinel. And they have coastal blue, then blue, green, red, infrared, short, I mean, near infrared, short wave okay. infrared. Many of them do not go. No, no, only. Yeah, as you, as you, when we saw the spectra, the, um, 
the spectral signature of the water, the infrared is already absorbed. So you don't get information. You don't get, I, you have you will ha you 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 may you may play between the coastal blue the blue and the green but yes yes if you have an hyperspectral sensor with a lot of with many bands or you have a, a sensor on a drone yes you will you will get more information also there are lately there are there are people who's using the 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 green lighter to make the bathymetry to to st to estimate the the sea depth and also they can measure up to 20, 25 meters with a LiDAR on a drone or on an aircraft. Yeah, but then with that, so if you have three channels, that's only doing like 20 meters. Yes. Then we could do a lot of data because then you could give it, uh, you show your example, you yes. can differentiate at least hmm. two types of sources, not three types, depending on. That was done very quick, really. I mean, in one hour. I, had, I was just to start classifying this and that, and then I launched it. You could. Yes, yes. I mean, that, yeah. that would be perfect, for instance, to have a map of the Poseidon and the Balearic Islands to solve the problem so where, where you can anchor or not the boat. I mean, it would be so easy to get just World View 2 image with that piece of resolution and just make the map we, we, without getting into whether the, the, the Poseidon is healthy or not, just, just to have the map. One point six. I, because I've seen words made with Sentinel-2, which is all right with 10 meters, but I, if it was me, I would say it's not that expensive to buy a few images to just to cover the whole coast part of the Balearic Islands and make a proper map. It's, it's buying the images once a year. That's it. Yeah. Yes. How many years are there? Well, it goes back to 2009. Yes. That's, that World View 2 satellite. So you could, you could monitor has been going since then. Yes. Can you give us you want some idea of the price of yeah, it goes images and how uh, this, this how the price established? The 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 price established by, by square kilometers. I, I I now I can remember so Manuel but but at the end they, they you don't have to buy an image which is good. You send them a KML or KMZ file, I mean that Google vector file and said this is the area of the study I want to do and they estimate that they have a minimum of a square kilometers uh, to send you an image but that area could be a combination of two different images so they will mosaic and send you the area and it goes by by a square kilometer but it's not it's not that expensive uh, no, no maybe 800 euros an image or something like that is not but I should check. Now I, I didn't. I didn't prepare that the price. It was. I, w I went into the into the open data. <laughs> in the open data, there are not much cost No, but in the open, yeah. Well, both Sentinel has, but Sentinel has with with a pixel of 10 meters. Landsat has Landsat 8 since 2013. Sentinel 2 since 2015. But Landsat has 30 meters, right? So that's, that's the handle. But I, as I think I mentioned before, if you go, if you write to the European Space Agency, they buy images from Worldview 2, which, which is something we are working now with Manuela, Javier, and Jose to get more images to monitor the Chile ya fastidiosa. I mean, and yet they said we have archives, we buy images, so make us a proposal, show us your project, and if you convince us, we'll give you the images. We are in that process now, so we will see. So, so you, you shouldn't have to pay for that. I mean, um, we well, it's not, it's not. I mean, it's not a lot of paperwork. I mean, it's quite. It's not. It's not. E it's not very easy, but it's not a huge amount of paperwork. I mean, at the end, what, at least we went through all this, and it's relatively easy. But then who did the decision? We don't know. I mean, if you, but, uh, but again, for map, I would say for mapping, seagrass, yes. But from getting information of the, of the health, how healthy is the seagrass, I, I, haven't, seen, I haven't seen anything yet. 
Yes, yes, for mapping. I, I don't know why, why it hasn't been done yet, because that, that I published into the, the newspaper, for instance. And I said to the managers of the, of the park of, of uh, a strength, I said, that's relatively easy. You could have the map. What's, 